Okay, thank you for watching. This is part two. God bless you. Um, and, and thanks for watching. <laughs> We're going to start off with the spies um, in just a second. One thing I want to mention is I have not found scripture for this, but it's something I want to mention. There's a prophet that I follow on YouTube named Edmus Amos. And he's a white-haired gentleman with a white beard. And I've been listening to his prophetic messages for almost a year now, not quite a year. And one thing he said to me, or said in one of his prophetic messages, was that certain people will be transformed during this darkness. Now, he didn't say the complete bride will be transformed. Now, I don't have any, like I said, scripture basis for this is, is vague. But um, one thing that stands out is the bride is going to be protected. But there, what I, the way I understand it is this. The complete bride of Christ will be protected. However, there will be some select sent out to do, um, to do the Lord's bidding to bring in the last of this harvest at this time. I don't think, personally, that it's the complete bride. I believe it's a select few. Now, some can say it's the 144,000. Um, you know, you have the 144,000, and then you have the great multitude standing in Revelation. God, one thing God knows is our ancestry, all the way back to the beginning of time. He knows our DNA. He's had us planned out the whole time. He's outside of time. So we could technically be traced all the way back to the beginning of time, our DNA. And we could come from a Jewish tradition uh, and not even know about it. Um, if you look at the 144,000, which I'm not going to get into right now, but I, I feel that these, there are certain chapters, I believe, in Revelation that are repeated, that are done more than once, prior to tribulation, during tribulation, after tribulation. Now, I might be wrong in this. This is just a, kind of a theory I have. But I, I do believe, but I don't have basis for it, I do believe that the whole bride will be protected during the tribulation and will have uh, God's um, blessing and protection. I do feel there will be certain few of the bride, and I don't know who they are, I don't know how it works, but I do believe that there will be certain um, people of the bride that will be sent out to bring in the last of the harvest. Now, this is how I think the spies come into play. You have all of Israel, which is all of the believers, okay? But you have two spies, very select, okay? Two men, very select few, out of the bride, out of Israel, that go in to the house of Rahab to... Um, well, in the story, is to spy and spy out the land, but they end up saving this woman, okay? Um, so, I, 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 like I said, I don't have complete scripture basis for it, something I should probably look into, and, and maybe I will, and, and put it at the end of the video or put it at the beginning of the next one. But I feel these two men represent that fraction of the bride that will be sent out to bring in the last of the harvest. Like I said, I don't believe it's going to be the complete bride, but I believe it's going to be the ones that, um, I don't know, have, uh, select, select from God. Um, just as Joshua selected these men, uh, so so Jesus and God select the ones that go on and bring in the last of the harvest. Um, I, I believe, personally, it's the ones having the dreams, the visions. Uh, you know, I've, I've had... The, you know, several dreams. There's other people that have several dreams and visions, and I believe that God is preparing them uh, for this task. Just my two cents. But let's look at this story here real quick. So he selects two men to go spy, right? And they go into the harlot's house named Rahab and lodge there. And the king of Jericho becomes, uh, he gets wind of this, all right? And he starts to send out men to gather them and to catch them. Uh, there came men into hither the night of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth those men that came unto thee, and that entered into your house. 
uh, for they come to search out the country. And the woman took the men and hid them and said, uh, they aren't here, all right? About the time of the shutting of the gate. Now, I think this is uh, kind of neat right here. When it was dark, the gate was shutting. And then it comes down here to this, that the people pursued after him and then the gate was shut. I wonder if this is some sort of police state um, or some sort of symbolism of locking down the city or um, maybe uh, martial law is coming into effect to find these spies, to find uh, these two men. Some sort of martial law is coming into effect where no one can come in, no one can go out. Uh, just my thought, okay? Anyway, uh, about the time of the shutting gate, when it was dark, but she had brought them to the roof of the house and hid them in the stalks of flax, uh, and she had laid upon the roof. Now, when you look at the diction, or we're going to do a Google search, and we're going to look at stalks of flax. Okay, so she hid them under flax, and interesting note here. Flax is used to make linen. Flax fibers are used to make linen. Now, I did see somewhere where it said fine linen. I cannot find it now. But what we come to find out is they are hid under fine linen. The spies are hidden under fine linen. Flax is used to make fine linen. Mordecai, Esther, both wore fine linen. There's the references right there. Esther 1, 6, 8, 15. Jesus was wrapped in fine linen. The bride of Christ will wear fine linen. So, here's the connection of this flax that was used to hide them on the roof. Now, you can do a search for the roof, and you come up with different things in the concordance, but... Uh, it could be as a watchman on the roof. They used to sleep on the roof um, and store things on the roof. Um, I didn't find anything too conclusive when I did a search on the word roof, but they were hidden under their fine linen. And the ruler pursued them, okay, um, of Jericho. Um, and they were trying to find them. But they never were found, and no harm ever came unto them. All right? During the tenure with Rahab, we find out that she kind of comes to comes to the Lord at this point, and she declares, uh, you know, there's been a great fear among her people in Jericho. Their hearts did melt, all right? And there's a saying, I can't think of the verse right now, where the hearts will melt when they see the day of the Lord coming upon them. Neither did there remain any more courage in man, all right? This is a picture of the day of calamity strikes. The lost will be struck with great fear and no understanding. Rahab has no understanding. The bride will be sent in an order and under the protection of the Lord to finish the rest of the harvest. Rahab is just a picture of this harvest. Although not mentioned here, the backslidden, remember we talked about the backslidden, will also come to the Lord, All right, as did Jonah. Now, she shows them kindness, and if we look at Matthew 5.54, I'm sorry, 544, and it's the verse about loving your enemies. Bless them that curse you, and, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despise you and persecute you. This is because they've been fooled. They've been fooled by Satan to hate us. They've been fooled, uh, and, th and I strictly think this is you know Islam that the Lord is talking about. They've been, they fell into a snare, and they're in that snare just as we was one, just as we were once in that same snare, and. Uh, you know, yeah, they do know right from wrong, and they do have free will, but they're in a snare, and they need help, and that's why we're supposed to pray for them. But anyway, so she goes on, and uh, they make a pact, and essentially, um, uh, she wants them to, you know, for her kindness that she's shown them to deliver them from certain death, and then the spies go on to say yes. Um, in 2.12, it says... Uh, I pray to you, swear unto me to the Lord that I have showed you kindness, that you will also show me kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save the life of my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters that I have 
and deliver us from death. Okay? And that's in verse 13. So, she lets him down with this rope um, out of the window of her dwelling. And we're going to get into the significance of that in just a second, but if we go to Isaiah 26, 20, I think most of you have seen this now, but it talks about hiding ourselves. And they had to go and hide because they were being pursued by um, the people from the city. And um, if we go into uh, Isaiah, it talks about, now I'm not going to pull it up, but you uh, go into your dwellings and hide yourselves for a little while until the calamity has passed. And you can look it up, and it's, we'll go to 27.5, though, and check, check this out. Um, and it says, For in a time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and my head shall be lifted above mine enemies around about me. Therefore I will offer his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, and I will sing praises to the Lord. Okay, So, just to finish the picture, they're being pursued. Uh, they've been let out of the window by a red rope, and uh, the city is basically going on lockdown at this point. And I consider that to be uh, symbolic of martial law that's going to be coming. Um, so she tells, uh, tells him to go hide yourself for three days. In the book of Isaiah, we just talked about that. And the spies uh, will be blameless uh, in this oath. In other words, they're going to keep their oath. They're going to keep their word. And we will return and put the red rope out the window to save your family. Um, the red rope through the window is the major Rahab will take uh, to be quickly removed out of Jericho, which is the world. Right before the sudden destruction comes upon the earth, Jesus will rapture his bride right before the sudden catastrophe along with the final harvest. Those left will have their final call to repentance and now face God's wrath. All right. In Matthew 6, 22, it says the window is the eye to the soul. The, the eye of the window to the soul. We see that the midwife, and this is an example. Um, we'll get into this here in just a second. But there's a guy named Grox on YouTube, Grox1, G-R-O-X-T-1, and he shows some very strange things in Google Earth and music videos, uh, paintings, um, commercials. He finds all kinds of different symbolism. Well, this red rope is found everywhere in his symbolism, and he even shows it as a vine that pulls our souls out by Jesus at the end of times. Now, like I said, it's not biblical, but it does make sense because uh, flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So what's going to happen is our fleshly bodies are going to stay here. Somehow, some way, we're going to be transformed. And the flesh that we occupy now will not go to heaven. And the, the red rope through the, through the window, which is the eye, uh, is... Uh, and if there's another verse. Uh, I'm going to pull this one up because it's significant. The red, the right eye of um, Satan is darkened, and it's the left eye that is used to pull this soul out, according to the Grox and what he finds. Um, but let me find that. And here's one. This is about the enemy. It's like, uh, uh, in my first, they gave me vinegar to drink. They gave me gall for meat. So it's talking about his enemies here. This is Psalms 69, uh, 19, roughly. And... Uh, it goes on, and I just did a word search, and uh, I looked for pity. There was none. For my comforters, I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat. For my thirst, they gave me vinegar. Just as Jesus was dying on the cross, he got vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them. Uh, and then it goes on. Uh, Let their eyes be darkened that they see not. Remember, Saul had the scales over his eyes. Okay? and make their loins continually to shake. In other words, strike fear upon them. So, darkening of the eyes. Okay, let's go back. There's several different references. This is just one. Um, windows. Windows to be darkened. So there's a reference with Rahab and her window. All right, so if we... Darkened windows, let, this is another talk about the, uh, the enemies. Uh, and that day when the keepers of the house shall tremble 
uh, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened. Okay, so the, you get this the picture here. Um, let's see, where is the verse I'm looking for? Um, sun will be darkened. Let their eyes be darkened. There's another reference. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down, back away. All right, I'm going to pause it and come back. Okay, here it is right here. Woe to the idle shepherd. This is Satan. He is the idle shepherd that leadeth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Okay, utterly dark in this right eye. And this guy Grox, he shows this all throughout um, with the right eye darkened. And it's it's also in cryptic videos like uh, I Pet Goat 2, if you ever watch that. Uh, with the, it shows a picture of Satan with his eye darkened. Okay, and th so this left eye, I believe, is the window to the soul. And this vine is what's going to pull the soul out of the, out of the, the body, okay, out of the world you will so um, just you know some fun with the uh, with what we have here uh, going on in Jericho we have this red rope through a window uh, to the the last believer in the world um, for her rescue okay um, all right I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off from here and then continue on